up for trailer. Good time to be picking up a boat. For those of you counting at home, yes, I'm picking up a boat with a flat deck trailer in the middle of winter. Hmm, call me crazy. I do prefer David though. Ah, look at him, all tuckered out. Nice. This is like pure ice. I could have brought my skates. Alright, so the mini jet boat is finally home. Literally almost crashed on the way here and saw someone, someone get hit, unfortunately. I think they're okay though, but nice, perfect weather to be picking up a mini boat. This is a 10 foot headwater jet boat kit made by Jetstream out of British Columbia. Now you may be thinking, that's not very boat looking. You're not very boat looking. Sorry, of course I have it. You have a good eye. This is not a boat, not yet anyway. That's the current task, to make it boat looking. Boat acting would be cool, and boat sounding would be just the icing on the cake. Alright, this is the bottom of the boat. And it is pretty heavy! Really. I don't know what I got myself into. Oh. Yeah, that's one fine looking barbecue pit. Why doesn't mine look like that? Why? Why must life be so hard? What on earth did I get myself into? For a little extra, Jetstream does offer a welded hull. But my flawless logical brain decided to save money and weld it myself. Now the first step on saving money is to spend even more money on just the tools. Now the welder alone cost more <laughs> than they would have charged to weld it. But I finally have my own welder. Ooh. All the welding I've done on my car projects has been with this Millermatic 180 MIG welder. Hell of a machine. However, for a quarter inch aluminum, I need something with a little bit more oomph. I love tinkering and building, so I figured I should probably get a good welder that I won't outgrow anytime soon. This is a Miller 220 Multimatic. I can MIG weld steel, of course, but more importantly, can make and take aluminum and take stainless in the future as well, which I'm super excited about. But first, let's hook this machine up and start welding aluminum. Fun fact, I know nothing about welding aluminum. And well, I don't really know anything about boats either. Thank God for Google. Did you know the back of a boat is called a transom? Ooh. I did not. Very cool. I do apologize for the unboxing. I know it's probably kind of boring, but this is my first welder. It's very exciting. My first, my own welder rather. Ooh, look at that. Hasn't been absolutely destroyed yet. Sweet. I'll be welding the boat soon enough, hopefully. But with any big project comes a plethora of side projects. For example, this gas hose was just a little tight for my liking against the welder cart. So naturally, I had to make some room. Five minutes in and we are ready to weld. So I'll be using just some scrap aluminum, do some test welding of course, and I read that stainless steel brushes work good to clean the aluminum. I guess aluminum's pretty picky when it comes to cleanliness. Hmm. Yeah, that's gonna be me soon, hopefully. This can be me boat. Ah, tape. Um okay. Never used one before. Seems like it's pretty straightforward though. I don't know. I'll give this a quick skim. Let's hook this puppy up. So if you're in the comments and be like, you're doing it all wrong, it's already too late. It is too late. This will take me years to edit. 
So, I guess this guy, it should connect just like a MIG gun. I hope. Very graceful. So apparently this has to go in. And we have to plug in this thing. There's no noise. MIG aluminum. I do apologize for this taking so long. However, just be thankful that you weren't there in real life. This took me ages to figure out for some reason. All right, it's time to test out the new gloves. Ooh. Nice. Spoiler alert, all my first welds look like I ended up switching from a 5000 series aluminum MIG wire to this 4000 series, and it made all the difference for some reason. Please let me know in the comments what maybe what I was doing wrong with 5000. I'm I don't totally understand, but I was happy with the first welds of this. All right, that was the last one. Got some kind of flakiness going on, and second last one. Well, I think that means I'm ready to start on the boat. All right. I'm actually going to put a welding blanket down. All right, so the test welds have been actually kind of successful. So I think I'm ready to start welding on the actual boat. The first step is to weld the transom to the bottom of the boat. Now I gotta peel off some of the plastic, but I've cleaned this up and then I'm gonna use this quarter inch spacer to space out the transom quarter inch and tack it in place. Wish me luck. All right, now that it's tacked to the back, I can kind of check the squareness. This is going to be moving, so I'm not too concerned, I guess. Well, that's actually pretty good. It's a little twisted. That's like perfect. Okay, I'll just leave the support in here for now. I think that's pretty good. Now I have to move on to the front. I gotta put some straps from like here to here and here to here. Pull the whole front together. So this is kind of the idea. I'm not totally sure if the vice grips can handle the task, but we'll see. Now it's moved. All right, let's see if this works. So before I do any tack welds on this, I kind of want to see I suppose I can use this as a guide. So these are actually very tight. We're not totally there yet. Still a bit of a gap. Well, I wish I was recording for that, but my little bracket broke off. All right, well. Take two. Coming together, I kind of ground down these tacks. And the reason is because I actually need to ratchet it much, much more. And you can see each of them cracked a little bit, which is good. It's what I wanted. But this measurement has to be 15 and a half. And it looks like I basically got it, which is sweet. It's a little higher up. That's because I got it on the welding mat. But yeah, it's finally got to weld that in and then I will weld the stringer in. And then I need to put like a little bit of a brace kind of to hold it together because it will want to flex, I'm sure, once I undo the ratchets. It's coming along, but I have 
little pinhole there and then there's one little funky thing over here too now I've noticed with the aluminum welding like you heat it like as soon as you start welding and then the aluminum gets hot it'll actually start to make a nice weld like this but I'll have to clean up the start point and then basically the start point of the next weld so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna torch this area get it nice and hot and then just try and weld it through and see see if that'll fill that up nice and it's fixed that worked good all right now it is stringer time so this center little stringer is basically for strength now this thing should keep it pretty well I'm hoping let's see how well this lines up so bad so these welds here I mean this is obviously the front of the boat they will actually be hidden, so I'll do all my practice welds there. Hopefully by the time I reach the exposed area, well, I'll be laying down some nice welds. But I'm just going to measure it out now. I think I want like a few inch weld every maybe six to eight inches or something. So I'll just measure that out. Alright, so the whole pump assembly is basically just under two feet long. And I measured this guy. So I'll start welding at two feet from the back. And then I'm doing three inches, six gap, three inch welds. And it actually works out that the last three inches is like perfectly on the top. So just kind of a lucky, lucky guess. But now I'll be welding my life away. Unfortunately, one of my tack welds is not in there. <laughs> A few left, but ooh, they're coming along actually. So the last few I've been torching, the beginning, just heating up, and it's worked so much better. Like the cold beginning versus heating it up. I'm yeah, pretty happy with that. I guess they're getting a little better. Better than those ones for sure. And oh my god, I don't even know what that is. Ugh. Kind of at an exciting stage in a way. Got the stringer welded in and I do have this little support welded in. Pretty funky thing, but don't worry about that. Now it's time to undo the straps. Now hopefully this isn't, doesn't move too much. I'm gonna quickly measure the tip from the ground. And then I'll undo the straps and see if that changes. Probably change a little bit. These are <laughs> very tight. Okay, it's about 15 and a half. Not really a graceful way to undo straps, is there? Yeah. Ah, now it's down. It is down a little bit for sure. Hmm. Now I gotta remove these guys on either side. And then the next step is to weld in the piece here. Lines up pretty good. I'm okay with that. A little bit of a gap at the front here, but really not too bad. I'm slowly getting the hang of it, I think. So I'm just laying these ones out. I don't think I really have to grind these down. I think these will be kind of in the inside of the boat. Putting a few stitches, but I should probably piece the rest of it together. I gotta weld in those like four sections. I actually think that's the next step. Alright, these are actually the stringers. These will go in there, just to the bottom for support, and then I believe my engine's mounted to it. And then the seats are mounted to it as well. And then of course they had some structural rigidity to the bottom of the boat. Man, what a cool project. I'm having way too much fun. So 
worst noise in the world. Alright, so I kind of did this wrong. I'll put the inner two in first. Alright, so slight cheating. But apparently these middle stringers need to be exactly 12 inches apart. So I'm using two of these guys. And then I placed it in the middle. And I actually measured from either side as well, just the back with the tape measure. And it's 14 and 5 eighths. And 14 and 5 eighths on either side. And then this, it's a little hard to accurately measure it, but I'm kind of going to the middle. And I have it at 11 and a half on either side. So I'm going to tack them in and well this should be good actually. But I can see maybe a problem. This one doesn't look straight. That one looks flat. This one doesn't. So I'm going to see. I'll tack at least where they're on the ground and then go from there. Alright so they're tacked in. I pushed down. It actually looks nice and straight now. Alright so the stringers are six inches each from center. So that's how I got my 12 inches. And then they're supposed to be 3 and 13 sixteenths apart. Basically just have to double check everything, but I am liking the way this is looking. Cool. So slight problem. The measurements were all good when I welded it in, but I think when I did like the four tacks, these probably straightened out the hull. And now it is less than a foot. It seemed to work actually. Just straightening it out. The stringers actually end up nicely in the end. I just had to push out the outside a little bit. When I tacked these in, it like folded in a little bit. 12 inches has to fit in between. There's a little bit of a gap. I'm not too bad though. The measurements are looking good. It is now time for a welding montage. I'll leave this episode here. Super happy with it so far. Learning to make aluminum really wasn't too bad. It's not on fire, so I'll call this a win. Next step is to weld the bulkhead and the sides, and I guess the rest of the boat. So stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments what I could do better, if there's any suggestions or anything, and well, thanks for watching.